to open a book package that I'm very excited about. I have been on a Van Der Meer kick, which I don't think is a surprise to anyone, but when I think about it, I haven't actually read a Van Der Meer novel since last year, like this time last year, I think like March. But we are like halfway through April, and the only books I've read so far, this is like really hard to open, the only books I've read so far this month have been Vandermeer novels. So I finished the trilogy or the books that make up the Ambergris world. So I read Shriek and Afterward, and then last night I finished Finch. My brain is buzzing. I don't know really how I feel about them as standalone novels, but as a world and a philosophy and an ecology that Vandermeer creates and almost, you know, there's there's strong political views and movements happening in these books. I really enjoyed my overall experience, but I treated myself, this is like a very early <laughs> birthday present to myself, but I was just scrolling on Instagram, as one does, and saw that Picador published, republished a new version of Vandermeer's first ever novel, Venice Underground. Some psychedelic dripping eyeballs. I am, I might just keep on keeping on in my Vandermeer. That might be all I read. My next wrap up it will be. Vandermeer alone. Actually, I'm currently reading, I just started, I'm literally 10 pages into one short story in The Assassination of Margaret Thatcher by Hilary Mantel. I have been listening to this podcast that I found called The Rest is History. Is that correct? The Rest is History. And yesterday I listened to like the full series that they did on the nine day queen Jane Grey if she was really a queen and now I'm on like the history and mystery of Jesus Christ <laughs> like deep in this history kick and I was really itching yesterday to start rereading Wolf Hall and it's on my list like I know I need to do it this year it's all I can like think about is rereading that book I read it like 2020 maybe which is not that long ago in terms of years, but in terms of my brain as a young person. I feel like my brain has changed a lot since then. I've read a lot more since then. So I picked up The Assassination of Margaret Thatcher because I'm just not ready to be sucked into a pretty big series. But I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be a May thing. I think what I love so much about Vandermeer is that each new book that I read by him it's so clearly Vandermeer that he's he's not just writing a new novel to write a new novel. He is building his his catalog and he is telling like an overarching story. He might play with different characters and different settings, but he's really telling like an overarching story that never ends. He plays with time. We're looped back in these same ideas and ideologies and fears and horrors. And he is just, I love him. So with that, I am going to go get my Saturday morning coffee where I treat myself. I technically could make coffee in the house, but I have been spending so much time in this apartment in a way that is negative, <laughs> um, which is fine. Like I actually saw this really funny TikTok of one thing I get my money's worth on is my rent. I I do. I get my money's worth on my rent because I spend so much time here. But it's starting to mess with my brain. That's my excuse and reasoning for why I'll go spend seven bucks on a coffee because I get to actually sit outside for two hours and it's, a, it's an excuse to be in a new space.
Welcome to another day. It's been a while. I am hoping to get up to some fun things today. I am not working today or tomorrow. It's like a massive gift to myself. Tomorrow's my birthday. So this is just like pre-work to my birthday because I know I'm having all the feelings tomorrow. I had all of these plans today to go to bookstores, go to anthropology because I really need a dress because my sister's engagement party is in a week and a half and I know that I'm gonna freak out if I don't find something soon. But it is really rainy and gray out so I've kind of lost my motivation. But I'm still gonna have a really good day. I have actually been on a reading kick. You might have seen that I have indeed started Wolf Hall. I, I haven't read it in years and it is pure brilliance. I, I'm loving it so, so much. Obviously, I knew I would, but I just, I'm amazed by Mantel, specifically in these books. Um, but over the weekend on Saturday, I stayed home in on this little couch, this little love seat, and read a book cover to cover. I read The Last House on Needless Street, which is like a an interesting horror novel about a man his daughter and his cat who speaks and reads the Bible and kind of unraveling the secrets that this man has and it's very eerie and weird. I liked it. I'm not a horror reader. I think I've learned my lesson with some of like the Stephen Graham Jones and the Stephen Kings. I am just not, I mean, those are like, you know, horrors. Horror novels by men. Katrina Ward wrote this one. Um, so you never know. But I liked it and it was like literally pouring down rain. And I really enjoyed my day. I've also read and finished Venice Underground. It doesn't compete with my love for the Southern Reach trilogy and for like the whole Born universe. But I just really loved it. You see like all of the seeds he's planting that will become a lot of his later books. He just has such a way with words and with beings and with like forming different types of life. But yeah, I would say that Venice Underground has actually a lot of horror elements, more so than the ones that I just read, um, the Ambergris novels. But I felt like it was horrifying a lot of the scenes in Venice Underground in like the best way. Um, so yeah, I loved it. Cannot recommend it enough. And now I'm on my Wolf Hall kick. So I will be reading it on my birthday, which is like, what a, what a gift to myself. But yeah, I am just gonna see what I get up to today. I am, like I said before, I am dedicated to getting out of this apartment. I know I just said that on Saturday, I stayed in this on this couch all day, which, you know, it's a balance. But I, I took off these two days and I really wanna get out do some shopping, just honestly go on like a really long walk even though it's raining. I have, um, I'm trying new things. This is the season of trying new things and I, like a couple weeks ago, joined a new gym, Orange Theory. I have been reintroduced to like hit style cardio and I don't really do cardio. I prefer strength training, it's what I really I love it, um, and that makes me like excited to work out every day, which sounds really obnoxious and annoying, but I do just enjoy strength training. Um, but I just wanted to, I've said it before, I really want to get into running, and I, like I bought new running sneakers, I felt like really excited about it, I bought new running bras, which was very necessary. But yeah, I've been going to Orange Theory like every single morning, and really, really, really liking it which is shocking because I don't love cardio, but yeah, I just like, I love the energy. I love that somebody's telling me what to do because I'm just not motivated in the same way to do cardio by myself. Um, but every single day at like two or three o'clock since I've started Orange Theory, I crash. Like I need a nap, like, a, like an infant. I am mentally and physically exhausted by like this cardio in my life and I know it will like, Pass. I'll get used to it. My body will get used to it. But I've been feeling so lethargic, like 
during the workouts, super excited, so much energy, and then a couple hours later, dead. It is really, really expensive, more than I ever imagined. My mom goes, but obviously I live in the city, she lives in the suburbs, and we're, we have the same type of membership, but what we pay monthly is very different, which I didn't know, I didn't even think to ask. Um, so we'll see how long I can last, how many months I can keep this up. But I think over the summer, I will be maybe at home a little bit more. Um, and I can renew my membership like each month. So when I don't think I'll use it for a month or I won't use it enough to feel like I'm getting my money's worth, I will probably cancel for that month and then sign up again because it's a lot. But I am trying to frame it up as investing in my physical and mental health and it's like a great routine because the class is at just the perfect time for me in the morning to still have time to get ready for work and, and all the stuff. So yeah, I'm now a cardio girl. I'm going to become a runner. So that's all I really have to say right now. I'm loving my recent reads and I'm going to go and brave the outdoors. I don't know where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do, but I'm determined and I think there are some fun things planned for tomorrow. So I don't have to do any planning and I just get to show up and I'm very excited and I'm trying not to think about aging. Today's the day, 25 years old. I treated myself to one birthday book yesterday and it's one that I've been waiting to get for a very very long time. I didn't want it in hardback because it's massive and would be uncomfortable to read but I finally got Moon Witch Spider King um, by Marlon James. This is the second, this is like the companion novel to um, Black Leopard Red Wolf that I read last year and it blew my mind. This is actually a signed edition which I am so disappointed because when I went to my favorite bookstore, they had a signed edition, and I was like, oh, how did you get this? And they had an event with Marlon James last week. And this is what happens when you don't leave your apartment. That's something I would have loved to go to. So yeah, I am really, really excited about this. I'm gonna go to my favorite breakfast place grab wraps for my boyfriend and I, and then we're going somewhere. I don't know where. And I feel like 25 is a big number. I don't feel 25, but I don't even know what 25 would feel like. I think in my head, and as a kid, I thought 25, I would feel like a woman, like a grown up. And I don't really. Um, it's funny because my sister's birthday my brother, sister, and I, our birthday birthdays are all like two days apart. May 1st, May 3rd, May 5th. So my sister just had her birthday two days ago. And I feel like we talk about it all the time, but she was always, like I remember her as a kid, always wanting to be a grown-up. Like always wanting, she didn't even want it, she wanted to be a woman. She always wanted to be a grown-up. And I was never interested. Hated growing up. Every single birthday, I'd be like disappointed that I was like leaving childhood. I always wanted to be a kid. My mom calls it Peter Pan syndrome. I never wanted to grow up. And it's happening against my will. And 25, I feel like I can't pretend I'm still a kid anymore. So, you know, it's fine. I still go home to my parents. This is why I go home to my parents all the time. That's like my, my time to regress into childhood, which I think is very necessary for me. It's not necessary for everyone, but I just loved being a kid and adulthood is, I was never interested in it and it sucks. <laughs> Obviously there are a lot of good things, but I just remember like my mom always says that I was the most happy like elementary school child all of those years of elementary school i was just like every single day happy happy to be alive it's actually funny so obviously my birthday is cinco de mayo 
And my mom tells a story all the time that in elementary school, you take Spanish class. And every Cinco de Mayo, they have like a party to celebrate and they bring in a pinata and lots of candy. And for multiple years of my life, I would go home and be like, Mom, they had a party for me at school. But it was Cinco de Mayo. I'm excited to have a, a good day with my guy and cry about being ripped from my childhood later. This is the look. I really, really like it. It's um, a little anthropology dress that I got the other day because I was looking for a dress for my sister's engagement party. Couldn't find one that I liked. And so I just decided to shop for myself for a random day. Um, yeah, I still need a dress. It's going to be like a little bit fancier. So that's why I am not sure. I want to like be positive about the dress before I buy it. We're going to have like a blow up castle, like a bounce castle and outdoor activities at the party. But for the first half, I think it will be like a classy event. That's at least my sister's goal. So we will see. I'm going to go get breakfast and coffee and start my day. I am indeed home. Shocking, I know. We ended up having such a great day on Friday. We went to the Natural History Museum to see the brand new insect exhibit, which was so well done. Um, ever since Purdue to Street Station, I've been very into like beetle and winged things, so I loved it. And then we had some great Thai food at one of our favorite restaurants. Part of my surprise was um, a couple of bookish treats at Barnes & Noble. I got to walk around and pick out a few things, so that was really, really exciting, and I did get a couple of books that I wanted to share with you. So we did travel all the way home with them. <laughs> really enjoying the weekend here with my parents. It's so great to see them. It's like a beautiful spring weekend out. Everything is green. Everyone's eyes are itchy, but we're very happy, and I'm just on the deck with Riley and he is sunbathing and living his best life. So let's talk books. The first one I got, I am saving for summer because I have been spreading out the reading of the Dublin Murder Squad series by Tana French. I'm not, I wouldn't describe myself as like a murder mystery kind of gal, but I just love Tana French's writing. I love the stories she creates. I love her character writing. So I picked up Broken Harbor so I'm saving this one for, you know, our time at the cottage or a beach read. And then as soon as we got into Barnes & Noble, I made my way straight for the sci-fi section. I predict in the next couple of years, there will be like a weird section that comes to life in some of our, our favorite bookstores. But I have picked up the last book in the Wormwood trilogy. I've also been reading this for the past couple of years. This is like an alien takeover story set in Nigeria in the not too distant future. And I really, really love these. I have been spreading these out more so because the writing does keep you out of remove. It's very cold and almost, it feels surgical, but the ideas in these books are mind blowing, like so smart. And I, uh, 
I'm eager to finish the series and see where it ends. Yeah, these are just great sci-fi books. I would really recommend them. And then I went a little crazy with an author I've read nothing by ever, but I feel like I can trust the larger bookish universe to believe that Robin Hobb is a great writer. So I picked up the entirety of the Rain Wilds Chronicles series. So I believe it's four books. If I'm missing any, let me know and I will pick them up. But I know there's a lot of Robin Hobb series to choose from. There was like the one about the assassin and the ships. But I was just really drawn towards these. So it starts with Dragon Keeper, Dragon Haven, City of Dragons, and then Blood of Dragons. And I am excited to read these over the summer and kind of get into a new fantasy world. And then if I love Robin Hobb, there's obviously a lot where that came from and I can eventually pick up her other series. But I just felt confident about these. So I hope I really like them. I'm sure I will. And then I was really eagle-eyed trying to find anything by China Medieval because I've been to a lot of bookstores where they don't have any of his books and that is what I'm looking for. I know I could order them, but there's something magical about picking a book up in person. So I found two Medievals and they're kind of beat up editions, which I'm not really sure why, but I don't care about that. So I got Embassy Town. This is like an intergalactic story aliens versus humans, some different ambassadors, they're colonizing different planets. So, I mean, who doesn't love an alien story? Really excited about this one, but the book that I'm most excited about of this entire selection, just because it sounds right up my alley and just so freaking cool, is Kraken, which is like a massive tome. So I will read you the blurb of this one just because I think it sounds so good. So, deep in the research wing of London's Natural History Museum is a prized specimen, something that comes along much less than once in a lifetime. A perfect, a perfectly preserved giant squid. But what does it mean when this creature, the Kraken, suddenly and impossibly disappears? For curator Billy Harrow, it's the start of a headlong pitch into a London awash in secret currents of myth and magic. A weird metropolis where competing cults, cops, criminals, wizards, and assassins are locked in a war with unimaginable consequences. For the magnific magnificent missing sea beast may be more than just a biological rarity. There are those who are sure it's a god. A god that someone is hoping will end the world. This sounds incredible. With that, I'm going to wrap this video up. I have been filming it for the past couple weeks, so I think it might be a pretty long one. And I'm just going to soak up the suburban air and hang out with my dog and do all of my, my favorite things. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you very soon for an April wrap up. Bye.